Hi, welcome to Canyons U Bite Size PD. Today, our topic is tried and true activities to build classroom relationships and classroom connections. We're so glad that you are joining us for this Bite Size PD um, to improve those connections in your classroom. So today, I just wanna welcome you. My name is Angie Holden, and I'm the coaching coordinator and peaks induction specialist for Canyon School District. I work in the instructional supports department. Um, I have an awesome family, as you can see my picture there, and my cute dog, Ruby. Just one unique thing about me is that um, I love poodles and I love Ruby, and um, just wanted to share a little bit about me as we start connecting in this PD. A reminder about our professional development norms, just looking at being committed, being responsible, be respectful, and be safe. I'm just going to give you a minute right now to think about how do you want to show up today? What do you want this learning experience to be for you? What questions do you have? Where do you want to go with this PD? You'll notice in the connections and the links um, shared in our bite-sized PD that there is a learning task notebook that goes along with this professional development. It's totally optional, but just has a place for you to take some notes, reflect on your learning, links to resources, and setting a goal at the end of this. So you can find that resource linked under the resources for today's bite-sized PD. Again, just a reminder, if you're joining us virtually to mute your microphone, you're welcome to turn your camera um, on if it's comfortable for you or blur your background. And if you have any questions, just type them in the chat, raise your hand um, or write them down and feel free to email me anytime. Today, our topic connects to our academic framework for Canyon School District with positive teacher-student relationships. And there's been some other bite-sized PDs, but today we're gonna take this into how these positive student-teacher relationships affect your classroom community and culture and make um, teaching and education enjoyable for you and for your students. If you look at this slide, the learning intentions, the rationale or the why behind why we're doing this and how you'll know you are successful. Today, like I said, we're gonna learn about positive student teacher relationships so that you can build a community and culture in your classroom or school setting, depending on your position in your school. How will you know that you're successful? You're gonna be able to implement effective strategies tailored to um, your own needs and your own students based on the principles of classroom culture to be able to create, cultivate a positive community and culture. And you're going to do that by building positive relationships with students. And maybe even some of these activities or strategies or reminders can help you with colleagues as well. So let's do a quick check in on your learning test notebook or on a piece of paper or with the group that you're watching this PD with. What is a celebration about your classroom connect community and connections in your classroom? So take a minute to jot down some ideas. Go ahead and feel free to pause the video if you're with a group and to share your answers. All right, so let's reconnect to why it's important to develop positive relationships. Developing positive relationships with our student is one of the most effective steps that you can take to establish classroom community. It's also associated with having greater student engagement and student outcomes. It's also the foundation for good, if the foundation for a good relationship is lacking, students will resist. And we've seen the last little while with a pandemic and other situations when we haven't had time or opportunities to connect and build a classroom community that students tend to resist until that is um, there. So the key thing that I want you to remember and take away from today is that these strategies can improve relationships with which in turn can improve motivation, not only for our students, but for ourselves as educators. And we know that it's been a hard road, but we're ready to bounce forward and how can we improve relationships and build back so that we can have that improved motivation. 
So I want to talk about five principles of classroom culture that are just common things that we know, but it's always good to review and reconnect and reflect on how are these things working in my classroom? How are these things working in my school setting? So in the next 20 minutes, we're just going to be reconnecting to these principles and then connecting to some resources that can help you on the areas that you identify that maybe you want to work on or maybe you want to learn more about. So welcoming classroom environments, how you can have influence with the environment. We're gonna talk about structured systems and routines, and that really ties to the principle of management and being able to manage um, your classroom culture. Then we're gonna talk about consistent behavioral expectations or your PBIS, and that keyword is consistent, and we'll talk about that. We're also going to talk about building relationships, not just building relationships, but embedding character and trust that brings that engagement from you as the educator and your students. And lastly, celebrating individuality and making those connections with all students in your classroom and recognizing the value of everyone in your classroom. So let's talk about welcoming a, a welcoming classroom environment. I know a lot of you might have had the chance to watch Home Edit on Netflix and how they arrange everything by color and how all of the trends in social media and, and out there have been organizing and putting things together. And that's a place where we can have an influence on how our environment impacts us as educators and the learning environment for our students. So what have you done to create a physically welcoming environment? Do people want to be in your classroom? Is it organized? Is it organized chaos or is it just chaos? And what can you do to make sure that when people come into your room, um, you are creating that welcoming environment? I always like to tie this to like going to your favorite store, or going to your favorite restaurant and thinking about what's welcoming about that environment and what makes it welcoming for you. And are you creating that for your students? I also think welcoming just the fact of welcoming people into the environment by learning their names, by knowing how to pronounce them, what is the meaning behind their names. Um, we have a lot of unique and individual names, and this is a great place to make it welcoming when you know people's names and use their names. So standing at your door and welcoming people, but not just saying, hi, come on in, but hi, Angie, how's your day? I'm so glad to see you. Can just that little tweak can make such a welcoming environment for your students. Also, what are you doing to make connections, getting to know you activities? What is shared ownership? Does everybody have responsibility for keeping the environment safe and clean and positive and healthy? What have you set up? You have to be intentional about these things, just like other businesses or like we talked about retail stores or restaurants. There's um, a, in a shared ownership about taking care of the environment and making sure that you're clear on what the expectations are and how everybody can be involved in that. And that again, it involves that inclusive design. And then we know we always love a good theme or how can we involve everyone? How is the whole class recognized in our classroom? Um, and then events and traditions. What are traditions or things that you carry out throughout the whole year to recognize and welcome students into your classroom? So take a few minutes and just in your notes, um, a section of your learning task notebook, what are some things from this list that you're already doing that you're like, I've got this down um, or I haven't really thought about this or I wanna learn more about this. So take just a couple of seconds and kind of self-assess and think about how can I um, create a welcoming classroom environment? The next principle of classroom culture is developing systems and routines. And this is going back to that management. Just like a classroom, just like a business, you're managing your um, business in your classroom. And so what systems and routines do you have for you to run an effective business or an effective environment? So making sure that the systems and routines in your classroom are predictable. Do students know what the expectations are, that they know that there's some routines, that they know what's expected when certain things happen. 
um, making sure it's safe, um, not just physically, but emotionally and academically. What are some systems and routines you have in place to create that safety? It's also important to remember that you have to explicitly teach, practice, and reinforce these systems and routines. If we just say one day the expectation is come in and sit on the floor, and then the next day we want them sitting in their chairs, but we haven't been explicit about it, we need to make sure that we're being very explicit about um, what students are expected to do and then give them a chance to practice, ask clarifications, and then we reinforce that behavior. Lastly is pre-corrections. Again, this is just explicitly teaching, preparing for things, what to happen or what to expect when um, someone comes into our classroom that's not in our class, what to do when an announcement is made and our um, instruction is interrupted, what to do when there's an emergency, what to do when we're transitioning. All of those can be pre-corrections and things that are taught and that are managed so that when your students come into your classroom, they know what to expect. Take again a minute and just think about what systems and routines exist in my classroom. What are some of the tried and true things that I already do and where could I make an improvement or where have I had an experience where maybe I should have thought of this beforehand. The third principle is consistent behavioral expectations. Making sure that you have a purpose of your design, that you're modeling the expected behavior yourself as the educator. If you're expecting your students to do something, but then you're doing the opposite, you're giving them a model that can be confusing, that can be contradictory to the expectation. So make sure you're modeling and then reinforcing students when they are um, following those expectations. Again, we talked about consistent. And if you're consistent, these things can become automatic, which frees you up from dealing with consistent behavior and more time for academic learning. Again, just like routines and systems, you need to teach them and practice them. And then how are we holding each other accountable in our community and our culture? So engaging students in creating and monitoring the high expectations and norms in the classroom. And what does that look like and how do we create that shared ownership of the expectations in our classroom? So not only you as a teacher, but the students as well, or anybody in your team, um, what, how do you create that shared ownership? And again, did we talk about consistency? That really is the key. And that is one of the hardest things to do. But once you make a decision, man, you make a decision and you stick to it and you follow through to where it becomes automatic. So if you're having a hard time with consistency, think about the things in your classroom that you want to improve with consistency. So take a few seconds on your learning task notebook how can I be more consistent? What do I need to be more consistent with? The next principle that we have is building relationships with character and trust. And this is really important, especially when um, lately in education and in our world, rules change all the time and with the pandemic. So making sure that you have a culture of safety, honesty, and trust. Are you modeling those behaviors? And are you expecting your students to have those same behaviors as well? Allow students to get to know you by sharing pieces of information about who you are as their teacher. And it's okay to have boundaries. You don't have to share everything, but what as your role as their teacher or their educator or however you support students, how are you allowing them to get to know who you are as a person, your character? Do your actions align with your words? And how can students trust you if those things don't align? Making sure that you engage students in one-on-one -on -one conversations. And how do you build trust, right? So some people are really fast to trust and different ages of students trust faster than others. So looking for those opportunities where you may need to invest a little bit more in building trust um, so students feel like they're being heard, they're listened, and they can trust. And my favorite thing is be a person of your word. 
um, our students look to us and they look to our character and they want to trust us. And when we are not a person of our word, it erodes that trust and changes how they look at us for um, as a person. So my little pow is just a reminder that I have in my office of always be a person of your word. So that's making sure that when you say something um, and you commit and you're developing that safety and trust that you follow through with what you um, promise or what you say to your students. So take a few notes. What do you do well to build relationships with character and trust? What's an example of something that you have done to make sure that this exists in your classroom? And finally, we get to celebrate individuality. And this is a great one because we do have so many um, different um, parts of who we are as a person, as an educator, and we need to also recognize that in our students. So how are we recognizing success for everyone and acknowledging success? Success might look different for each individual. And so do we have a way to honor that or are we making sure that everyone only conforms to one standard of success? Creating individually also allows for problem solving conversations in your classroom. How do you address new ideas or thoughts, maybe things that might not be what you expected or um, someone shares a different new idea? How do you accept those and um, make people um, feel like they can share and that they can be a risk taker? This also explains and models how differences in our our beliefs, how we grow up, our um, culture can benefit a whole group of people. And making sure that it's that you're speaking with respect and courtesy, that you're using human first language, that you're understanding and embracing high expectations for all students in your classroom. Individually, individuality can also be um, embedded in your classroom by giving opportunities for students to be self-directed and self-monitoring and advocating for themselves. And how are you communicating that with your students so that they have the opportunity to um, have some self-choice in your classroom? So take a minute, what are your strengths? What do you appreciate about being able to celebrate individuality in your classroom with your students or on your teams um, in any school setting. So all five of these principles are just a little reminder and you may be thinking, oh, I, I kind of already knew all of these. I had all of these and I know these and these are basic things. Sometimes it helps us to go back to the basics and back to those core principles that really are tried and true to helping us build relationships and classroom connections. What I'd like to do is share with you some great activities and connections um, and some resources that you can, now that you've reflected on what's been successful in your classroom and what is um, going well, and maybe you've identified, oh, I think maybe this is an area that I need to improve. And I've tried to link just a few resources that um, might be able to help you um, in your learning. So the first resource is just a relational capacity strategies and activities, and it's multiple pages of just kind of an overview of creating an inclu inclusive classroom and welcoming classroom environment. And then a lot of get to know you and culture building activities. The nice thing about this resource is that each activity is defined and it's given a time. It's almost like a pre-lesson plan for you. So it's a great um, resource for you to just go through and look through and kind of see if it connects to something that you'd like to do to improve in your classroom. We also have a list of avid cheers for celebration. I think it's fun to find ways to um, celebrate accomplishments, celebrate input, celebrate engagement, and all of these avid cheers um, give you some of those opportunities that you can teach them and use them in your classroom. So having a power clap or having snaps for academic language may be some ones that you've seen used in adult learning PDs that you could incorporate with your students. And sometimes as a teacher, you feel kind of goofy doing it, but the um, 
children and the adolescents that we work with developmentally, they love these. So even though you might not love it, they would love it. And I challenge you to try it out with them. I also wanted to just re, um, connect you to Teach Like a Champion. Many of you might have seen this book, Teach Like a Champion, that has a lot of great um, strategies and videos in it. And your coaches and your schools have these resources. But this website is a place also where these resources and videos are shared of just really quick strategies like threshold is a strategy for welcoming students into your classroom and so you could type in threshold and it would give you the steps of the activities it also has like a hundred percent so no students opting out and how do you increase engagement to a hundred percent so it's a great resource for you to connect to as a teacher um, I also just linked in our relationship and connection activities in our CSD instructional guides, which are part of your curriculum map, which is a great resource for you to just have a quick little idea that doesn't have to take a long time, but just uh, when you need a moment to reconnect, especially like we're coming up on spring break. So how am I going to reconnect with my students when they come back and reconnect to back to our classroom culture and those relationships? And then another new resource from USBE is personalized learning options. And this connects to creating an, um, opportunities for individuality and individual learning in your classroom, which I think is a great um, option to consider for the differences in your students and, and looking for ways to um, allow students to have some individuality and some self-directed learning. So I hope you'll take a minute after this short bite-sized PD and kind of choose one of these to look through and see if there's something connected that you want to improve um, in your classroom or share with your team or discuss with your colleagues. So let's review really quick the five principles of tried and true um, principles that relate to building those relationships and classroom connections. So what influence can you have on your environment? How am I running my management? What is PBIS? And the word is consistent. Having engagement by building those relationships and how can I create connections with my students? So now it's your turn at the end of this Bite Size PD to pause the video and maybe um, take a minute to review the resources that are linked on your learning task notebook and in the slides. And I want to leave you with this, this last parting thought and a few questions to reflect on. Your classroom community is one of the most important factors in determining success for your students and for yourself as an educator. And I just wanna reiterate that this is something that just can't be ignored, that it really determines a lot of the success of all of the other strategies that you use for teaching. So as you reflect and think about how you're gonna apply what you learned, what is one new idea that you learned about in this session, either from the five principles or the resources that are linked? What will be your focus for building community and culture this school year? or how are you gonna start it for the next school year? And then what is one strategy, idea, or takeaway that you plan to implement immediately? What's something that you could do tomorrow or after spring break that would affect your students and improve your classroom culture and environment? I appreciate you taking the time to meet with me today and watch this video. Please reach out if you have any questions or you want some links to specific activities, I'd be happy to support you with that. I know your time is valuable. Make sure that um, if you need any other resources, we have our Canyons U, Canyons U Bite Size PD. And if you are watching this class for relicensure credit, the link is linked here and you can submit your um, notes and uh, reflection for relicensure credit. I hope you have a wonderful day and I um, wish you luck in building relationships and classroom connections with your students.